can everybody hear me also in the back? Okay, I see a thumbs up, thank you. Welcome everyone. Uh, we didn't expect this crowd. Uh, we didn't expect it. Um, the sandwiches, they're empty now, uh, but there are more being made now. So after the lecture, if you haven't had any, walk by, you can get one. Uh, also for the my future points, if you haven't scanned it yet, you can do it after the lecture. So uh, yeah, we'll arrange that. Um, yeah, so welcome. I think today uh, marks quite a special day uh, for me and my fellow board members because we've been uh, working on this quite a while and now finally the event starts after two weeks. Uh, however, I think it's also quite a special day for you guys because uh, these events will yeah, help you a lot in your uh, future career uh, because you're able uh, to learn all kinds of knowledge uh, and get closer to the work field. So maybe you're a first year student and you're doubting if you want to go to the A direction, the U direction, or the B direction, or you're a second year um, trying to find out which master suits you, um, or you're in your master and you're looking for an internship or a job. Uh, all of those things we can help you with the coming two weeks, so we hope to see you there. Um, about the events, I will show you briefly what they are. Of course, now we have the kickoff. Yeah, you're all here, so you know. Uh, afterwards, you have master classes. Uh, there is still some spaces left, so if you want to go there, uh, you can subscribe at the desk after this lecture. Um, the 22nd of November, on Tuesday evening, uh, we have a debate in the Blaue Saal, so then you'll be able to sit. Uh, it will be about cities of the future, so it will be yeah, very interesting about how cities will look 50 years from now. On the 23rd, we have the one-on-one -on -one interviews in the morning, which you are still able to subscribe for uh, until the end of the day. So if you still want to join them, please subscribe before the end of, the day of, of today. Uh, and afterwards, you have the career market where the whole of Plaza will be filled with all kinds of companies where you can walk around, talk to them. Um, and then lastly, on the 30th of November, we will have a lecture again by Rijksvastgoedbedrijf, which is the biggest real estate owner in the Netherlands. Uh, and afterwards, we have the company dinner, but that is uh, already filled, unfortunately. You are still able to subscribe for the waiting list, so if people are not able to come, then we'll pick the first one of the waiting list. Yeah, so thank you all for coming. Uh, I'm gonna give the word to, uh, to Merle now, uh, the managing director of the uh, department. And uh, we hope to see you at the rest of our events to build your foundation for the future. Wow. If you're sitting in the middle, you have no idea, but the image from this side is impressive. So I hope that there will be lots of pictures and that they also will be posted so that you can see that you were part of this, this event and this, uh, this kickoff. Before I start, I really would like to have a big hands up for the, for the, for the board who organizes this. So <laughs> big compliments. Um, and I think indeed this is this is a wonderful kickoff. It's a great event. Um, we are one of the departments that are needed, I would say, to to shape the future. And why am I saying this? If you if you look around, if you look to the to the daily news, if you look on your apps on the news, we all see that the Netherlands is uh, up front of a big rebuilding of. I would say, the Netherlands as a whole. Everything in the Netherlands is designed. Everything is also made. There is no piece within the Netherlands that haven't been created in an urban area, but also in the, the areas between the, the, the urban, between the cities. This means that every one of you is going to work in the big rebuilding of the Netherlands. We are sho have shouldered some houses. We have lots of prices there. We have um, at the same time, not only the, the obligation to, to, to rebuild things, things that are built in the, in the 60s and the 70s, bridges that are going to collapse if we don't do anything. At the same time, we have to build new houses because there is a big house shortage. And we are in the middle of a climate crisis. So everything we do, we have to think over. We can't do that at the same way like we did 20 or 30 or 40 years ago. So it doesn't matter which profile you're going to choose, every profile is going to work on this big challenge. And we are going to do that together. 
Um, so I think you are in the exactly the right study, exactly the right moment to really have a huge impact on society as a whole. Um, that's what we hope that you will learn you within this study. But also I would hope that you can build that bridge in the upcoming two weeks to companies because every aspect really matters. And I can say that also I would say as an alumni of this department, I um, studied here years ago, uh, graduated within, uh, within architecture and at the moment now being the managing director of, of, of this uh, uh, great department. And this also means that it uh, doesn't matter where you at the end end up. If you become an architect or you become more on the managerial side, the things you learn here, you can put into practice to make real impact. And I really hope that you find lots of joy of that. Also, come a bit of your out of your comfort zone. Try also to look on things you haven't seen before in your, in your standard curriculum uh, and just explore. I think this is the bridge oh, to going to, uh, to Luke. Um, really proud that we have him here and big hands also for him. Can everybody hear me, right? Yeah. Cool. So back to my presentation, which is about architecture, of course. But when I was at these talks with Max a couple of weeks ago, I was thinking about what should I tell here today? Should I tell my project? Should I tell about my story? And we came up with our discussions that it should be my personal story, how I myself developed in becoming an architect and also what I did here in university and how I ended up at Meccano and what I'm doing currently over there. I have to say, I had lectures here with way famous architects and way less people. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm surprised a little bit myself as well. Uh, this is me, I think, yeah, I would say three-year-old, already thinking about being an architect. I always wanted to be an architect. And I went to my mother, dove in my archives, and I found these drawings when I was a child, already doing very well drawn perspective drawings, <laughs> and played a lot of roller coaster tycoon. I was just, <laughs> what made me an architect and choose this environment in the end? And I always attended very classical uh, school buildings, and I, did, I think also when I look back at my time as a child, all these built environments, all these really nice schools have inspired me to becoming an architect. Of course they get demolished, uh, I put my childhood memories are gone in my little village. And also my high school was this beautiful classical building with long hallways just connecting with these classrooms and I enjoyed these buildings so much every day when I studied there. And there you also can see how the built environment really contributes to you yourself and what you're doing over there. And of course I ended up here in this beautiful redevelopment as well by Dieter Dirks and I spent here six, seven years of my life because I also I did a lot of other things over here which will I show you around. But in my first year, I remember to this day, I got an advice from John, John Swachter. He still works here, right? He said to me in my first year, okay, Luke, you're doing good, you're doing great, but don't do everything here, but explore, go to lectures, go on excursions, draw. Do as many things as you can to develop yourself, not only your architectural skills, but also your management skills, everything. Like you said before, I completely agree with you. What you learn, you can practice everywhere, not specifically in architecture, urbanism, or structural engineer. You can do anything. So I say, attend lectures. Like here am I, in a way less crowded room, <laughs> having a lecture at Joost Hector, which is way more famous than me. But also attend lectures by Wiel Aretz here in the Zwarte Doos. And even a couple of weeks ago, I went to a lecture in Amsterdam by Lisbeth van der Poel, Elle van Loon, who told their stories, not about architecture, but about how they developed as an architect. And that inspired me also to do this lecture. And go on excursions. We went with a whole group of people to the Bruder Klaus Kapel. We, we rented cars. We went for two days visiting all these architecture projects. And I dove into my archives from year, years ago. And we found all these cool pictures again. Went to the Don Hans van der Laan cloister in the south of Limburg. Really a must visit if you want to learn architecture. And I enjoyed my course in architectural analysis, of course. The models are here. My model is over there. It's the Tushinsky building. And all these discussions with Hushnu six months. I hope the course comes back because Hushnu retired a couple of weeks ago. But I learned so much from constructing this model, having discussions and debates with people and my group how to construct this model and how to make this one to 33 scale model because you learn so much from it. Not every day because at night you think, well, 
why. But if you retrospect it, it's really cool. And you do exhibitions, and we had a publication in the Parole by Jochem Groenland and Hushnu as well. And, and then we also had these exhibitions again in Amsterdam. So these are all things almost outside of your curri curricular that are so valuable how you develop as an architect. Having these huge publications, me as an old picture. But also I joined Anarchy. Here is a beautiful picture from me. I think I was the fifth board here, and already I heard yesterday into the 13th board. And what I say, you learn so much more. You learn to organize. I was the treasurer, so you sort of learn about money. And uh, those are also valuable things. But that anarchy, for example, that led me to also take an reis with Helene Aerts, and we went to Ghent. And I mean, like, I wasn't the best drawing artist in my first year with Renato Kind. Like on Friday evening, we always had these courses with Renato. And I have to say, I don't enjoy them always. But if you do for five, six days of studying, drinking, having fun, having discussions with other people, you really become good in three, four days. It's insane. Because you see me here on the left side completely like, what am I doing here on my first day in Brugge? And but like after three, four days of discussions, you get better. You don't have to have always a good perspective drawing. I mean, Helene, she's wonderful at having these analysis, but always sharp and to the point and never like treats you like, if it's a bad drawing, she says it's a bad drawing. Uh, but you learn from it. And the year after, me and two other friends here decided to, we wanted to take the next step. We wanted to go to Porto for the next drawing excursion. So we ended up going in a Ryanair airplane with 30 students. And we were in the middle of Porto, again, sketching. And I, I love these like sort of action photos of us sketching. Two of my best friends now, I see them every week within Rotterdam. And we were just sketching in the, in the heat, and it was lovely. And, and we had these, you, and these discussions with the whole group, they were the best thing there was. Like the atelier work, I know you all, well, sorry. I know I hated multi, uh, because suddenly I had to work together with a lot of people. But it, it actually is always the case. If you look back to it, it is helpful because in my daily practice, it's always teamwork. Because you have to do the design together, the solutions together. So the teamwork is very valuable. You never work on your own, but in my first three years, I thought here, I want to do my own designs. <laughs> Leave me to it. Yeah, and, and these beautiful, and also see, you see some beautiful architecture because here we're sketching this beautiful tea house on the shores of Porto by Alvaro Siza. I mean, like all these experience contribute to who you are and you can bring to an interview in the end and you can talk about it. And also doing these wonderful expositions just in vertigo, but also to hang something from the ceiling here in vertigo and have discussions with, I thought it was just Ton Max said, it was quite hard to arrange something on the ceiling, but we persisted and, <laughs> and we made it happen. And those fun things, how do you make things happen, is so important as well in real life with clients and, and, and governments. And I also joined the Archiprint, of course. I mean, for two years, I contributed also my life to the Archiprint, also within Anarchy. And we did interviews with OMA and MVRDV. And again, because they were sort of mandatory, these boxes. I don't know if they're still here, but at that time, Casa Vertigo, all exhibitions had to do these white boxes. And we made up exhibitions, uh, did release parties. Again, we made it happen to hang something from the ceiling with these boxes and do openings and lectures. So really got all people involved. So also we bring a lot of information from the outside world into the Archiprint and bring it to th the students. And I always say, that's the same what Lisbeth van der Poel said a couple of weeks ago in her lecture, never waste a good holiday. Here, are, here I am 15 years ago with three friends who don't do, do do not know anything about architecture. And I did, had to do like a whole reroute to visit Mies van der Rohe's Neue National Gallery. And they were thinking like, what the hell is Luc doing over there? And why he wants to spend an hour over there? But it's amazing. And this summer I revisited the building again and after the renovation of David Chipperfield and it looks still amazing. Every time I'm here, I'm mesmerized. My photo skills have improved. Um, but also go to Paris, was there with a friend again, and she said, what is this ugly Renzo piano, Richard Rogers, Centre Pompidou? And I spent again half an hour, an hour in analyzing the building. I want to go in, I want to go up. Uh, and the same with Berlin, all these pictures are from last summer. I went to London, see Herzog and the Meron and the Foster. But please do join Anarchy, go on these excursions. 
say to your architect, architecture friends, we want to go for a week to, I don't know, London and visit all these people with, within yourself. And if I might have another advice, eh, this is like my personal story, but also a little advice, do these things, do an internship, because it's good, because you learn so much. I was shocked about the way an architecture office works in relation to what the built environment teaches, but I still am behind that thing. I think it's very good you're teached freely here, the problem solving, the thinking, the discussions, but if you're looking for a job, and this is a career event at all, at, uh, at the end, please do an internship, it helps really a lot when you're applying after five, six years of university into a, ar another architecture office. And also because I worked on the Archiprint and Joost Ector uh, knew about it, he invited me to also think about their magazine. So I did the, the graphic design of these magazines, I had interviews as an intern at Ector Hostad, but just because he read the Archiprint, he knew about it, he said, look, do you want to join? And I joined. So I had talks with all the partners within Ector about their projects, and we'll have weekly meetings with the team about this uh, project. So also these things, like connecting to doing an archiprint, ends up also working as an intern next to the architecture. And in the end, I worked on this building. It was realized, and it was so funny. So like, I did it as an intern, three months of doing like configurations of tables and rooms into this university building. And then in the end, I revisited the building three, four years ago, never heard I anything from it. And I went there, and I saw shit. That little thing, I know, I designed as an intern. I brought that design to the table with good arguments. As long as it's a good idea, I think also within our office, even an intern can have the best idea, as long as you have the arguments and the story to it and present it in a team meeting, for example. And visit the Biennale, another little advice. With my friends again, <laughs> visit the Biennale of Kolhaas, having late night sketch sessions on the San Marco Square. And even last year, we went back with the same group of friends had an amazing time, a little bit of Biennale, a little bit of fun on our roof garden in the city center of Venice. I enjoyed it so much. Also, participate in workshops. I mean, like all these things contribute to who you become, in this case, as an architect or an urbanist or a designer or even a structural engineer. And we had this seminar about this beautiful national assembly of, da of Khan in Bangladesh. And we were so enthusiastic about this after a seminar, one quarter, quartil, right? that we end up in the next quartile building a one to 200, four meter long model in the workshop, which we were so proud of. And yeah, it was just an amazing experience to just also come up with assignments yourself and even got some ECTS for it. <laughs> and also participate in other workshops. I participated for myself in the Dutch Design Week, uh, the future of Eindhoven together with Winnie Maas from MVRDV. In two weekends, we built the whole city of Eindhoven in foam. And in the end, with Winnie Maas having just crazy ideas about the future of Eindhoven. And all these, some of these ideas that we thought up in that workshop ended up in this supervisor ideas of uh, Winnie Maas, which was really fun to see. And of course, graduate, that I would assume you do. <laughs> but again, we had so much fun, so much fun. We traveled to, to Poland, to Belgium, because we were, in, um, we were the graduation with David Genotte, the first year with David Genotte. I have to say a little bit intense because he, he, he treated us like we were uh, people at OMA, but putting the pressure on, but in the end that led to an amazing research within three months with our group. We also printed a book again about that. It's, it's such a cool thing to do. And we're building models and we completely did an analysis of almost all abandoned industrial sites all over the world. It's in a book, it's somewhere probably on the internet. And then I graduated myself with a redevelopment in, in, in Brugge, in Belgium, of a, of a redevelopment. And here you see David, and here you see me. <laughs> in the end, I was very happy about it, but I was exhausted for 12 months of graduation, I have to admit. But in the end, he proposed me uh, towards the Dutch Design Week. So in the Dutch Design Week of 2017, I was there in the Klokgebouw at the TUE stand, having my uh, uh, graduation project over there, which was super nice which I thank David Giannotte to this day too. And all these thing, things I brought to my interviews after my graduation, the architect, the, the, the organizational skills of anarchy, my photography, the internship, the workshops, lectures, the excursions, all the committees, but also the competitions. And they all ended up on my resume. Like my board experience, I would even put as experience, not as extracurricular, oh no, they are extracurricular activities. 
but that showcase so much more skills than really good architecture in my say, because you, you, in the end you need it. Sometimes I have a day without architecture even in the office, but that's so fun. Wait, yes. And then I ended up at Meccano, right? <laughs> Where you had all the promotion for. Uh, after my graduation, I took some time off. I would highly suggest it after you graduate because you can never do it again for weeks and months on. And then I started doing interviews. I always brought my, uh, I brought my graduation book and I brought my archi prints and I brought my portfolio. And I remember at the interview at Meccano, we only walked through that book and to the archi print. He didn't even look at my portfolio, which was really cool to just show again that your graduation project is the one you have to count. I mean, like that's the project where you're gonna put in your portfolio and bring to all these uh, meetings. But then I ended up at Meccano and my first project was the Grace, two high-rise towers in The Hague. And of course, when you start, I'm still making models in foam, which was really cool. And we ended up doing a thousand configurations of this site, and here's a plan. And I remember I drew like 60, 70 conf different configurations of all these high-rise floors. I mean, like I just started there. One week, the project developer wants 30 square meter houses. The next week, he says, new client, 60 square meters, and then he goes back again. So we're constantly redrawing go completely crazy, but you're also doing really fun stuff. You go to the wind uh, tunnel, not the one in Tegel Eindhoven, unfortunately, but <laughs> the one in, uh, in uh, Nijmegen. And that's also, I just want to showcase what, I, what, a, what my work looks like in some of these projects. And we still sketch, we design facades. Um, and in the end, it looks this, a little bit project developer-like, but well, it's not bad. Um, but I was working on high rise and that was really fun because I work at Meccano, it's a large international office. And within the office, we all have these labs. So we have Mac uh, sustainability, but a group of people that research that and bring that to every project. We also, for example, have Mac high rise. And of course we have some work in New York. So, well, they sent me to New York. <laughs> and here you see one of these uh, high rise slender towers. I was there in the middle. That was quite scary because that day it was very windy and snowy and one degree. And we went up with uh, this guy, most fun guy ever, he really this American construction worker. And uh, we went up uh, this little tower here, not the internal elevators, no, the external elevators from let's say up to 300 meters in this blizzard. <laughs> but, and then you find this kind of stuff in the 300 meters up in the air, this mass damper uh, that they used to, you know, the sway that, that people don't get seasick in their multi-million dollar apartments. And it was really about researching how can you build a community in this rental apartment. The graves I showed you before, that was completely rental, very small apartments, but a lot of communal space. And that's typical in New York, lots of rental, full of amenities. So we research how does the, these buildings work with the mailing system, the building management system, and they have amenities. I mean, like you live in tiny apartments, but you have a basketball court where you can go. You have a swimming pool, you have fitness spaces. But also, if 1,500 people live in this kind of building, what do you do with storage? What do you do with the bicycle parking? And all these rental apartments compete with each, with each other. So within New York, you live for six months, you go to another apartment. I mean, like these are insanely expensive, I have to admit. But how do you build a communal sense within this building so they do a lot of activities, they have roof gardens, but also how do you treat the garbage? I mean, like, you really have to think about if you do such a building, how do you think about these things? And I have to say, the view from the apartment that we rent in New York is not bad well as well. <laughs> and waking up in there every day for three days. And again, we also applied that kind of research. For example, one of the projects I did for had Sandkasteel in Amsterdam. It's this enormous building in Amsterdam by Albert and Van Hoek, the former ENJ headquarters, and another architect already completely converted the plans to housing. But we, and with all these nine, ten towers are connected by one huge internal street. And of course, within an office atmosphere, that makes sense. But what do you do with it if you suddenly completely have ten residential? Uh, so we were asked with our experience from New York, but also from our experience with other projects, what can you do with this internal street? Because it was connecting all these towers on the plus one level. So we came up with 10 interventions that how to connect this almost like a public street from ground floor to first floor. 
and just opening up this building of Albert and Van Hut. It's too extensive to go all in it, but I just want to showcase a little bit of what I did. And have these roof gardens on top for all the people, for example, that really that we took those inspiration from New York into there, and we compared all these programs, for example, how much apartments are there in relation to the amenities. I mean, like 10% is often amenities, and even 10% of more is roof garden on some buildings to really get all these people in this building to really connect. Uh, and then, <laughs> whew, yes, this project, Museum Boymans van Beuningen, I started after I was fed up with the towers and I was fed up the grace. I said, we were one of the three architects selected for the competition of the Boymans van Beuningen Museum, and I said, I want to work on that. So I said, I want to work on that, and they said yes. Do I regret it? I don't know. Uh, what I have to say with this project, and not, I cannot show anything more or less because it's all non-disclosure agreements with all these kind of projects, which is very annoying. But I can show you the process and how the competition design and the end result is. And what I still love to do when I start a project and what we still do within the office is research, analysis, go into the database, see how it looked 100 years ago with these beautiful drawings or images. Because this was in 1935, the first building by the Boymans and got extended in 72 with this modernist brick wing by Baudon. And we were sent out in, these, in this six month competition. I mean, like you think a project here takes six months and that's long, only a competition for the Boymans from Boeing, it takes six months where you have dialogues with the client and the museum directors. So I was just working there for two years, quite green still, and suddenly two weeks after I was in this environment with all these museum directors and directors from the municipality who owned the building, and we had conversations. There were three dialogues in three, four months of four or five hours where we were talking to the client because we wanted to get their input for us to make the best design possible. I mean, we were playing in the Champions League of Architects against David Chipperfield Architects from Berlin and a uh, Kahn architect from Rotterdam. So we felt even a little bit like the underdog in all respects. But we had amazing discussions. And in our, f our second dialogue, well, that went so-so, but our third dialogue, they were so enthusiastic about the proposed design and our solutions even for logistics. And that we almost won, or well, we did one, but that's here. And but we had late night discussions with Francine. I mean, like for such a project, she's also very involved. I mean, like probably the right picture is 11, 1 a.m., probably in the night. And in the end, we presented our vision to uh, in a presentation and with where we demolished the two other buildings and really went back to the 70s in all the discussions and dialogues we had and had this new intervention of an entrance building. And in the end, we won. I mean, like we were so surprised and. When we win, we, 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 we celebrate. We celebrate big, of course, because we put six months of work, work in there. And this was, again, our proposal for the new entrance and museum and cafe into these old buildings of this Museum Boymans van Beuningen. It will take, though, 10 years <laughs> to finish, like the Rijksmuseum and the Stedelijk. But currently, it looks like this on the inside, because all these walls were double brick walls, and in the 30s, they did a complete system of asbest, of asbestos, right? It was a complete air handling system where the air would go through for the museum quality was completely in asbest. It was a really ingenious system, but it had to be removed. And these are pictures from two weeks ago when I revisited the building, and the beauty of the building is still there, but in the, at the end, it's also quite demolished in the end, and it's also our task. We don't do new, flashy architecture. We also restore this building. I mean, like, our spectrum of work is so broad. And even last Sunday, we're still wanting to have this real vision realized. So with Francine, we had a, with the elected council of Rotterdam, we had a tour through the park and a tour through the building to really have our vision realized. And when I was doing the Boymans van Beuningen, after some two years, I got the opportunity to finally project lead a competition. Well, you thought graduation is tough, this is tough. Again, this research is really cool every day, but this time I had to project lead it. But that means Francine is on top of you, she wants a vision, that you, but also I have a team to manage. I'm hardly designing in four weeks. I mean, like I have to manage a team, 
I have to do mails, I have to contact all the municipality, the authorities, there's notifications of questions you can ask, deadlines, there's so much to do. And you are the one in the middle that are, is organizing everything, but also writing the text at night, because during the day you have to manage your team, so what you're doing during the night, all these texts for the submission, that's what you're doing at night. But also really fun things, of course, Francine is well connected, and we were also went to the pond and had a discussion with the director to see what he wants, for example, because those two museums are really closely connected. So you also come at such amazing places and talks with such amazing people. And also prepping with the advisors, because of course it's not only architects, but also this guy was the, 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 he knows everything about climate. I had weekly meetings with our advisors, so also they have their input, and we really have one integrated design that we present, right? There comes Multi again. And we, in the end, even also presented again with Francine and one of the associate partners and me to a whole board with Floris Alkemade as well, the former Rijksbouwmeester. And this was again against Kahn Architects and MVRDV. And we won again, yay. And I was very happy that the first really competition I project leaded, we won with a vision. And again, this is the only image I can show from our proposal, of course, because this is the only thing that has gotten into the media. But we're really, really, working on a really nice plan for this museum quarter. And then one of my other projects in Amsterdam is just a little fun thing to show. It's the Quartiermaker, former carpet ride, more on the project development side. And it's really in the city center of Amsterdam, one of these last industrial areas would still have a Praxis and a Leen Bakker and a painter. And we came up with this sort of stacked heavy floors where also the painters can be on the first floor and you can walk around up and really try to develop this with, together with the project developer. But again, a municipality is very reluctant, of course, in such areas, so we have a very long process to take. This also takes two, three, four years, maybe even, to get built and realized. And then I have a little movie, because you're always curious, how does a day at Meccano look? Well, we made a little video about that. It's quite funny, but well, it just shows you what we have in the office now. A day. <laughs> What happened then that they went? So what I wanted to say, also relax some, from time to time. Here I am with Marta Willems <laughs> in my graduation show, and I think uh, I ended with that. All right. Uh, I can assume you have some questions, maybe, for Luc. So I will try to walk around with the microphone. I don't know if anyone has a question to Luc. I think after such an amazing story, one of us would have a question. Yeah, uh, Bart, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I was wondering, um, what would be your, your biggest piece of advice for other students who are now here 
uh, one gigabit per state in uh, the BBD. For, for again, for what? For the BBD and as a whole. Just for the bulk and the bedrijven. Yeah. Well, visit me next week here on Wednesday. I'm here <laughs> on the career market. Yeah, together with another colleague who studied here. We have even we have more than one people from the University of Eindhoven. I think we have four or five, but we have people from all over the world. Doesn't matter where you study it. Every study is what you make of it. That's what I tr also tried with my presentation. Do also more than just the subjects and the courses and the projects here. They're amazing to do, but do more than that. If you really want to develop yourself, I say, as an architect. Okay, thank you. Any more questions, maybe? No one? All right, then I think you will. No, oh, no, no. I see someone in the back there. Can you, can you shout it? Because I think I won't be able to get there. Oof, yes, I have quite some projects now in the office which probably take a few more years. So we'll first do all those projects. I really want to see them from start to finish. Like with the Boymans from Burning, I started on day one with the competition and we're still working on that vision. So I really want to see that realized and completely designed. Same with the textile museum and same with the other project I'm doing. I really want to see those and really design from start to finish. So for now, stay at Meccano, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any more questions, maybe? Other questions we can also ask at the career market next week, because uh, Luke, Luke will be there again, yeah. so uh, you won't have to miss him. Um, well, I want to thank you all for coming. I want to thank Merle and Luke especially. We have a small present for you, uh, yeah, for your nice presentation uh, and your efforts for us. Yeah, so, so, so give them a round of applause again. <laughs> Dankjewel. Ja, ze hebben maar niks op de grond. En dan, zoals je kunt zien behind me, we still have these other events. Uh, we would love to see you there. Um, about the masterclass, I heard that there was some issue with that it said that some people weren't allowed to come or anything. If you subscribed, you are able to come. So if you have subscribed, please come at the masterclasses. If you still want to join, you can uh, uh, register at the back. And uh, we hope to see you at the rest of our events. <laughs>